So in doing the reading and thinking about my potential project in terms of the um, sort of planning, evaluation, and then dissemination phases of this type of project, I'm, I'm struggling with, I think, a little bit at each part of this. Um, the planning and, and prototyping uh, concept is, is a little bit challenging for me. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I, I tend to be a little gung-ho about things and say, all right, I'm going to convert my whole uh, my whole curriculum to game-based format rather than saying, oh, I'm going to try this lesson and play it as a game. And that, that's partly, you know, that's a big, big uh, personal thing for me. Um, and so I, I have to be able to scale back my uh, sort of vision, you know, and start, be able to start small. Um, but also I have a little bit of a hard time reconciling kind of the idea of testing in the classroom. Um, and so on two, two different fronts, one, you know, either I'm doing it as a test and I'm just gathering data and I'm not necessarily, because I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, I'm not necessarily going to count it um, in the student's assessment or evaluation, which is kind of tricky because if they know that it doesn't count, they're not going to put typically their, their full effort into it. Um, and if you tell them that it counts, but then it really doesn't, then, then that's an issue too. Um, so it either, it either counts, in which case if there's an issue with the design that somehow um, fails to deliver the content in a way that's useful for the students, well then I either have to teach it again or, or something like that. Um, so there's this this thing that I struggle with about, well, if, how can I just test something that might not work? And, and I'm doing that with this project, and I have been doing it in my classroom, and some of the stuff just doesn't work. Um, so I have to you know, evaluate and be honest about that with myself and with my students and say, you know what, I tried this, clearly it didn't work. I had, you know, this this was my expectation, didn't meet that expectation and that didn't, um, you know, hasn't served you well or me well. We didn't get done what, what I thought we were gonna get done. So I'm gonna have to, you know, do something different and, and re redo it, um, kind of have a do over. Um, and, you know, I don't want to do that too much because then, you know, it gets frustrating for everybody. And, you know, from a, a professional practice point of view, you know, I have to, I do have to answer to my administrators and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I tried this and it didn't really work. So I'm going to do something different. And you can kind of only say that so many times before, you know, things start to become more of a problem. Um, then in the evaluation phase, I, I see... You know where I'm in. I'm in a public school, high school setting. So if I teach, say, a unit, or even a, a a small portion of a unit, a lesson, in a certain way, and I evaluate the results, and then I my my next iteration might not be for a year, and it's not so much that the time frame is an issue because you know I'm hoping to be teaching next year and the year after that. So I I, I hope to have plenty of chance to iterate. The issue is that. You know, next year's students might be very, very different in many respects from this year's student, and so the um, you know that's true even from class to class. But typically, from class to class, I have a much better handle on. Okay, I know, you know, I know that this class has certain strengths and that class has certain strengths. So if I test this in two different classes, um, you know, I can more easily see why one class might perform better than another in certain areas. But then if I iterate and I make changes and the next class doesn't perform well, it becomes more complicated to, to try to figure out, well, did they not perform well because my iteration failed or, or was you know, insufficient or, or didn't go in the right direction? Or did my iteration fail because this particular group of students um, you know, has a different skill set from last year's students, which happens all the time? Uh, so that in terms of the evaluation and, and sort of reflection and iteration piece, I'm 
you know, I, I struggle with, you know, because again, my, I don't teach, you know, a class in the fall and a class in the spring or, you know, a different group of students every six weeks. I have my group of, you know, my five or six classes um, for a full year. So if I teach it one way for a unit, I don't get to do that again for a year. And so there, there's, there seems like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, variables there. And so that makes it, um, that makes it complex in that respect. And then the last piece, um, dissemination, you know, this is more, you know, in the big picture, I can certainly, I would hope, um, see where, <laughs> sorry, that's my kids. Um, I can see where, you know, I can do the study, hopefully write up the study, hopefully get it disseminated in some form of publication and, uh, you know, get it out to people who might be interested in this sort of thing. I can say, you know, while there are, I have colleagues in my, my school, my team, um, who are interested in different aspects of this um, and who are very supportive of my efforts to do this, I don't, you know, foresee this disseminating beyond my classroom. And I, again, I don't have a problem with that because I'm, I think I can do it. But, um, you know, one of the problems again is working with my administrators where they're saying, hey, you know, I have to, you know, as a teacher and, or as an administrator, have to answer to parents and students who might be saying, hey, we're getting one experience with teacher X and another experience with Mr. Ward. And they're very, very different. How do I know that we're getting, you know, equal value essentially in, in the learning experience? And, you know, while I certainly hope that they're learning and enjoying the learning experience, I do have to consider, um, you know, if I'm the only one in the school doing something a certain way, how does that impact my students compared to students in, you know, the classrooms next door? So that's something that, that um, is a challenge. So I have a little bit of, of um, questions slash, you know, the muddy waters on, on all three phases of the reading this week. The, um, the sort of prototyping, designing, planning. Um, again, I, I personally have to work on drilling down and focusing in on the small and building up from there. Uh, but I also have to reconcile this concept of testing and, you know, testing with my students versus making sure that they're getting the, um, the, the learning experience that they deserve. Um, the assessment uh, and evaluation piece um, is subject to a lot of variation and, and obviously design-based research is about variation and iteration and, and looking at kind of the big picture as opposed to just assuming it's one size fits all. But even with that in mind, I can see we're going from year to year with different iterations. You know, I might do it one way one year, iterate to the next year, and then realize, ah, oh, man, it really would have worked for this group better the other way. And, and that's part of that is just you know, good teaching. But um, in terms of the, a design-based research project, um, I could see where that would be challenging. And then the, um, the dissemination piece just, you know, in my small world uh, is going to be challenging at best. Again, I have some, some colleagues who do little bits and pieces of this, and certainly that would be, uh, it would be great for me to go to them and say, hey, you know, I did this empirical study of this element, which is similar to something you're doing, and, and you know, I can show based on this data that uh, what you're doing is helpful. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm sort of setting myself apart with this uh, in a relatively small uh, group of people. It's not like there's a hundred teachers and, you know, I'm just one of them. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of essentially three, three and a half um, chemistry teachers. So if I'm 25% or even 33% of the, of the teaching population and I'm doing something different from the other two thirds, um, you know, that might be an issue. So those are my, my thoughts and my reflections for this week.